All right, so we are gonna be tying this little yellow worm grubby thing. It does ride hook point up. Has some little legs hanging down there. It has a nice eye and it's a really simple tie. It has lots of action in the water and this little tail undulates quite a bit. So, set this aside. Um, I am tying it on a size six jig hook with a 532nd inch tungsten bead on it. So, I'm gonna put it in my vise there. Um, the thread I'm using is some yellow GSP. So, just get this tied on here quick. Snip the tail. And then we're going to tie a little thread bump right behind this bead here. Just to make it so it doesn't really slide back much. You see? So that's pretty good. And we're going to run our thread all the way back to the hook bend. So pretty much right in line with the barb as you can. You might not be able to see that. Right in line with the barb there. And then we're gonna run her all the way back up again. Try to fill in some of the cracks you had there before so it's nice and smooth. Not necessary though. Then we're gonna take some these extra small double pupil barbell eyes. Might not really be able to read that with the camera there, but um this look like this. Little barbell eye. And we tie this in by doing a little crisscross. So we wrap one way, and you hold it over here. I'm kind of blocking there. Then you're gonna wrap another way. And you just kind of go around right on top of that hook there. And that just kind of cinches everything down. Um, make sure to leave about a millimeter behind the bead. So the eye, as you can see, I'm not quite done tying it in there, but um, you have that much space there, just so you have room to build up the head. And we are tying it with the hook point down. Um, you kind of you tie it inverted. So then we're gonna give this a uh, just a few more wraps there. Get it really locked down, as these eyes do like to spin. Cinch it down one more time. Then I'm going to run my thread all the way back to the hook point again. And I'm going to take some thin super glue. I'm just going to do one little drop right on the threads. Um, you're doing it right on the threads there, right on top. Just to kind of lock it in so it doesn't hit spin. And this is optional. I have some accelerator right here. It just makes it cure faster. So if you touch it, it doesn't go everywhere. Um, and we're gonna let this dry for a moment. And while we do that, um, I'm gonna take my main body. So the, this is a mop fly. So um, there's those mops that you kind of wear as a glove when you're washing your car. I just kind of cut them up. So I have my little saddle of mops here just take your scissors and cut it right off and then you can see there's kind of two ends on here you have your nice rounded end and then then that you cut off it will fray away a little so when you go to tie this in you want to just pull a little bit off and then take the frayed end so you're gonna put the frayed end forward you're going to tie in right there so then that keeps it from falling apart in the water. And we're just going to, it's kind of tricky, but let's give it a couple wraps there. You want to go heavy with the wraps to build up a little thread ramp because that'll help taper your body and it will keep it nice and smooth looking. But not too, too many. 
and then run it back down all the way over. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take, I'm using some yellow woolly bugger chenille. So you're just going to take this end here, and pluck the end off a little, because then you get your inner strand showing. So instead of tying over all the bulk on here, just tie over the little strand there, and you get a much more solid connection. So we're going to tie this in right here. I have a little too much thread out. So it's right there, as close as you can get it to that mop. And then run your thread up to about a millimeter behind the barbell eyes. So right about there. And then I'm taking some like silly legs. You can use whatever color you want. I'm using some gray and brownish black colored stripes. And we're going to take two individual strands off and just kind of cut them as close to the thing as you can. So you may set two little strands. And I'm going to take one and just kind of fold it right in half about and you're gonna put it right there make nice big loops don't try to tighten it down right away if you tighten it down right away it's gonna spin and it's not really gonna do what you want it to do um i have a little too much thread out though so you just want some nice big loops just like two and then position it where you want it to be make sure it sits right right there don't lock it down yet though just keep it nice and loose and you're gonna take this other one right here on the other side the exact same thing and put it on the side closest to you so we're gonna just do the same thing two loose wraps and position them where you want them to be and then you can go through lock them down i only did two little lockers it's plenty because you don't want to cut it and then we're just gonna kind of run it right in front of where these legs are so it's gonna be kind of hard to see can't really focus but i have the third right in front of where those legs fold back so then i'm gonna grab my chenille and just kind of palmer it right around nice tight wraps and you want to try to get it the same thickness as that mop so it just kind of blends um the yellow chenille that i'm using right now is a little bit lighter than the mop color it's kind of hard to see on camera but it's a little bit lighter and it kind of shows that there's just like makes it kind of segmented to show that there's two parts of the body making the head a little bit or the front part a little more vibrant where all the vitals are so we'll make the fish target more toward where the hook is. And then just one more tight right behind there. And then you just kind of, it's a little tricky, but you have to try to open up these legs and get one wrap right in between all of them. And that really helps separate them out and it makes them blend right into the body there. And then you're gonna do, then you pull your thread up a little more and then one wrap right in front of the legs. And just kind of pull them out again. It's not a big deal. In the water, they kind of float up and do their own thing anyway. So then I give it two twists with the thread around it. And then I tie that in there. When you're cutting this tag end off, try not to cut your thread. It's fairly easy to do. I've done it just like that. Perfect example. Luckily, it didn't fall through. So if that happens, mistakes do happen. Just come in. You can go in wherever. I just go in right in front, right by that bead again, in front of the eye. Makes it nice and easy. Tie your thread right back in there. Tie your tag in, and bring it back and finish tying in that chenille. Make sure it's all nice and set. Really try to make sure that you get over that thread that I showed you earlier. Really helps to lock it down. And then I'm taking some Senio laser dub. Um, and I'm using a brown color. So this is what we're going to be using to make the head. 
so you don't need to too much. This is about good. That wispiness, because when you throw it on your dub and noodle, um, it really thickens up. So I am using GSP, so it's not really going to stick on the thread very well. But um, if you have some thread wax, which I don't, I'm out right now, um, that makes it stick on here a little better. And it'll touch more. So I'd say probably need about three inches of this. So you want a nice three inch, pretty, fairly dark and tight dub and noodle on here. And then just keep rubbing it in there so it's all nice and tight. I'll help you build that head up so you can see it. There you go, right there, about three inches. So then what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take your thread, pull your legs back a little, and all right, so you pull this up a little. And pull your legs back a little and get one wrap, one and a half wraps behind the head there, and you're gonna cross over forward and give one, so it's a cross, one half, then go back. So you're kind of doing like a crisscross, you're gonna make an X, and then you're gonna come back forward again and just finish out the rest of your dub in there. And then I like to kind of pull it back a little, just so you have a little spot there to finish her off. But you're fairly done. So then you can grab your whip finisher tool, or you can just throw some half hitches and a little bit of super glue on there. Um, some whip finishing um, takes practice. Not too, too long, though. And you're just going to do a couple of those. Pull it off. Let's close it. And reel your thread in, cut it, you take it out of your vise, and just kind of do some pluckiness on here and kind of fuzz it up a little. You don't have to, just make it look nice. And then it is done. Let me just grab this here. Hold on a moment. Let's try to show this to you a little better. But that's it. It's a fairly simple tie. You can tie it with or without the legs. I just feel they make it a little buggier. Um, if you do do it without the legs, um, it makes it look more like a worm. So. Alright, I play some strap. It's a cheap one. But yeah, so it does, it rides hook point up. Um, if you tie it without these eyes, the jig hook does still make it kind of ride hook point up-ish a little bit. I just like the eyes. It gives it a nice sink for bouncing off the bottom. Uh, I designed this worm for bed fishing for smallmouth. So, I'm going to hop around. Um, where did it go? I lost one. So, there you go. We got two of these right here. You get that nice smooth transition right into that body there. It's going to undulate all nice and nice. The fish is going to come up and whack it. Um... I was experimenting a little bit earlier, so this one, instead of tying that, like, just that one tail in there, before I tied in, I made a little ball of dubbing right here, you can kind of see it, this little ball, and then I tied these two in right around it, and it kind of separates them, so you have your tail there, and I tied the legs in the same way, and instead of stopping the chenille right behind the eyes, I brought it all the way up forward, so... Um, I have not tested this one yet. It doesn't really mimic anything, so I don't know if the fish are going to like it. Um, if it does, you can, I can tie another one if you just want me to. Here's another little smaller one I did. Same split tail, tied a little differently. Only three legs because I ripped one off on accident. But, um, yeah, super simple fly, tie. Um, yeah.